In this lesson, we'll start adding information to our smart device icons with their related cloud information. If you recall from the last lesson, we lost the smart device ID from our viewer. Since we're no longer using the HTML element, nothing is utilizing the smart device ID. The good news is that the marker base class comes with a built-in title attribute. And what this does is it takes in a title, string, or HTML element to show a tooltip when the pointer is over this marker. So let's set this to our this.smartDeviceID for now. Save it. Go back to our browser. Let it compile and reload. And we should see a new hover effect if we select our smart devices. Now properly showing our smart device ID. So given this knowledge, we'll use it to further expand the hover display above our markers to show some cloud data. The first thing we need to do is to get our cloud information into the marker class. If you remember in chapter data federation, we've already created a smart device API.ts file that defines a static function called get data and fetches our cloud data. So we'll need to use this in our decorator and pass it down to the marker. The first thing we'll need to do is to import our function by importing the smart device API class, smart device API, and go down to our call right before we establish our device markers. And I'm going to store this into a variable called cloud data and call our smart device API dot get data static function. Just to refresh our memory on what the cloud data looks like, we'll hit the endpoint in our browser. So going to our smart device api.ts file, we're going to control click here and it should take us directly to our cloud data. So we have a timestamp right here of when all our smart device data came in, a key that matches our smart device ID and a data object that pertains to each device. So going back to our VS code and going to our smart device decorator file, we don't want to pass the entire cloud data object to each marker, just the data that matches our smart device ID key. So let's add another parameter to our smart device marker, the cloud data with the key that matches the smart device ID. Now we need to redefine our smart device marker to take that additional argument to cloud data. So going back to the file, add the additional cloud data parameter of type any, since the cloud data has multiple different attributes per smart device. We should have only the information uh, from the cloud pertaining to the smart device in our marker now. So instead of populating this with the smart device ID, the title, let's call this dot populate title with our cloud data. So defining our populate title function, it will take the cloud data argument of type any, again, we don't know what the object will look like. And you'll immediately see that VS Code is complaining that this dot title needs to be of type either string or HTML element. In our case, let's set the title to be an HTML element just to make it a lot more pretty than the string. So I'm going to start by creating a HTML element object called smart table div and call document.createElement div to establish our HTML element. And for now, let's keep things simple. I'll set the inner HTML of the smart table div to just be the header that stores our smart device ID for now. And Let's put some placeholders as table, table, and right here we can just imagine that this is going to be where our cloud data goes. And this establishes our smart table 
HTML element, and we want to return our smart table div back. So now our title is now populated with an HTML element, and it no longer complains. Just for our sanity check, let's save it and go to our browser. Let it recompile, and if we highlight our smart devices now, you'll notice we have the title as the uh, the header labeled as the smart device ID and an expected object object since the cloud data isn't an HTML element yet. It's just an object that stores our smart device properties. So we need to break down our cloud data object into an HTML element. So now let's replace our cloud data instead with a smart table HTML element. This will break down our cloud data object into an HTML element. So we need to declare the variable smart table to be an empty string for now. We don't need to use document.create element since this will be part of the smart table div. And to make things a bit clearer, let's copy and paste one of our cloud objects inside the code. I'll be using the speaker because it has a lot of smart data right here. Go back into the code and I'm going to paste it right above. Comment it out. Do some formatting. And you'll notice right away uh, for speaker 001, the smart device ID, we simply have a key value pair that displays the properties of the smart device. So key notifications and a value of two for the notifications. So what we need to do is parse these key value pairs and dump it into our smart table variable. To start it off, let's loop through our data with a for const two values, the key and value of object.entries of the cloud data. Object.entries is a built-in JavaScript uh, function that returns an array of key values of the enumerable properties of an object, which is exactly what we need. Close bracket and let's start filling out our smart table by appending it per key with a row in the table. And the first column being the key value and the second column being the values value. And that should be it. Let's give it a save and observe our changes in our browser. So highlighting it now, we should get some more information for each smart device. The formatting is a little bit off, so let's go back and add some CSS to make things a little bit prettier. To better scope our CSS, we're going to declare the smart table divs class name to be called uh, smart table. Let's give that a save, go to our app.scss file, and let's keep the table fairly clean. We're going to have a font size of 12 pixels. You can change it to whatever you like. And for the table data cells and table headers, we'll have a border of one pixel solid black color. Let's left justify these with text align left and pad them by eight pixels. Give that a save, return to our browser, and things should start looking a lot, a lot nicer. So now you'll notice our smart device IDs with the relative information and a nice black outline for our tables. So much better. We now have some pretty floating icons and relative information for our smart devices, but they don't really do much when we click on them. And they look like they should. So in the next lesson, let's add some zoom functionality to our clicks.